What is going on YouTube? My name is Aaron Abels and thank you so very much for joining me. Today I will be discussing how I got sober and my story. So let's get into it. So before I get started, I want to shout out my boy Adrian who helped me film and edit my intro video. His Instagram will be linked right here. I also want to give a shout out to my boy Fernando who produced the track for my intro video. He is an amazing producer and his Instagram will be right there. So I used AA as my form of recovery which is Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous made me realize that I wasn't alone and I wasn't crazy. In AA my favorite meetings were the long time speakers discussion. They were they were people who have been sober for a very long time and they share their stories and that's what I want to do for you guys today. So I'm gonna find a nice comfortable location and I'll meet you over there. So growing up, I had a pretty normal childhood. I had both of my parents. We suffered a little bit of poverty. And when you're a child, you don't really notice those type of things. But looking back on it, it makes me realize that my parents did everything they could. And I really thank them for that. In middle school is where I first got drunk. I am the youngest of five siblings and my sisters used to throw a lot of high school parties and being the annoying little brother that I was, I'd like to tag along and always be around. They used to play this game called quarters where you sit around a table and you try to bank a quarter into a cup of alcohol. And if you made it, you would choose somebody to drink that and you would continue going until you missed. It gets a lot harder as you get drunk. So I was on a roll making everybody drink around the table and then I missed. Everyone from then on who made their shot gave me their drink. Needless to say, I was hugging the toilet like my first child going off to college. I vowed never to drink again, and I didn't for a while. I was an active teenager. I played baseball and I was pretty good at it. I was also an amateur skateboarder. In high school is where I met my wife, Elizabeth. And we had our first child at the age of 16. I had other intentions and wanted to hang out with friends and have a good time. I started going to high school parties and you have drinks here and there. At that age, you could drink pretty heavily and wake up in the morning with no hangover. By the age of 19, Elizabeth and I had two kids together. I was still very immature and I didn't want to handle my responsibilities. I have to thank God for Elizabeth because she really stepped up and handled our responsibilities. We ended up separating and we lost contact for some time. In my early, in my early 20s is when things started to get worse. I was a party animal and I was known for being a big drinker and I also had a reputation for being able to drink a lot. Little did people know that I was becoming an alcoholic. There were a lot of times where I drank by myself and I was a complete loser. I remember drinking all night and sleeping all day and most of those times I would be drinking by myself my sister Deanna was able to get through to me and she slapped me back to reality and reminded me of the responsibilities that I had. She was the one who actually helped me reconnect with Elizabeth. I wanted to impress Elizabeth and show her that I was ready to be a man. Things were good at first. We were newly couples again and the romance was there. But slowly my alcoholism started to unfold. Throughout the years I put Elizabeth through hell. I was malicious, I was verbally abusive, and I humiliated her a lot. And a lot of those times were in public. I was very embarrassing to be around, to say the least. If there was an event or a party, 
and there was alcohol involved, we would be the first ones there and the last to leave. Our marriage was falling apart, not to mention how bad I was as a father. I'm haunted by the things that I've done and said to my children and I can never forget. I see their scared faces all the time. See, there's some alcoholics who suffer from blackout trunks. My curse is that I can remember everything. It's like having an outer body experience and you're watching yourself do all of these horrific things and there's nothing you can do about it. It's absolutely terrifying. And then, and then my uncle, who was like a second father to me, I had to watch him pass away from cirrhosis of the liver. If any of you have been through that situation, then you know exactly what I mean. I wanted to stop drinking, and I actually did for about two weeks, but then I was right back to it. I was very sick, and I would wake up every morning throwing up. I used to convince myself that because I was physically sick, that that was an excuse to call it a work sick. I've lost countless jobs over alcohol. I remember the days leading up to my sobriety. Elizabeth and I were on the verge of divorce. When I would drink, I would become very jealous. I would constantly accuse her of being unfaithful. I remember the last day that I drank. Elizabeth and I had gotten to an argument and she went to go put our daughter to rest. I went in there screaming, yelling to the top of my lungs, grabbed her cell phone and shattered it on the ground. All this while my daughter was sleeping. I stormed out of the house and I went straight to the bar. I got home like around 10 p.m. and I got into an argument with my father-in-law and I said a lot of horrible things to him. From there, I probably drank another 30 pack by myself and I was up until 5 a.m. I, I woke up with the most horrible hangover ever. I even missed my son's basketball game. It was that day that I realized that I was on the verge of losing everything. I was going to lose my family, I was going to lose my friends, and I was ultimately going to lose my life. So the next day was Monday, I went to work, and after work I went straight to an AA meeting. My sister Gina has also gone through recovery, and if it wasn't for her, I don't think that I would have successfully became sober. I called her every day explaining how I felt and what I was going through, and she never missed my call. I owe her my life. Elizabeth was very fragile at this time and skeptical about my sobriety because I had given her so many false promises and lies after lies. It's really hard to mend a relationship when you're trying to work on yourself and your well-being. I had to make sure that I was mentally prepared before I could fix the damage that I've done. But it wasn't impossible. My life today has changed dramatically, 180 degrees because of sobriety. I'm not going to exaggerate and tell you that my life is perfect because it's not. I still have my problems, my responsibilities, my stresses, and my worries. But now I have the tools to deal with them instead of trying to pour alcohol all over them. Sobriety has opened up so many opportunities for me that I never would have experienced I wasted a lot of time and now I'm trying to make up for that lost time. My relationship with my wife is a lot better. Yes, of course, we still have our arguments, but that's normal. I'm a much better father and I want to set an example for my children that they can accomplish anything that they set their minds to. And I also want to share with my children the risk of substance abuse and that addiction is hereditary. I absolutely feel more healthier than I ever did before. Not 100% physically because I can't do all the things I used to, but you know exactly what I mean. I never thought that in a million years I would be sitting here sharing this story. As cliche as it sounds, if somebody like me can get sober, I can promise you anybody can. There are so many programs out there that can help you, and they're absolutely free. I used to be the type of alcoholic who would watch these type of sobriety videos drunk. If that's you, or you feel that you have some sort of problem, I want to encourage you to take the test that I'm going to link in the description below. You may be surprised by the results, 
And please trust me when I say this, that there is absolute hope for you. I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to my story. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all soon. Thank you. Take care and God bless.